Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Brandon Mann is in the Minnehaha County Jail this midday, accused of driving drunk, killing a man on a motorcycle, and then driving off. Sioux Falls police say Anthony Serdez turned in front of a motorcycle late Saturday night at Arrowhead Drive and Veterans Parkway on the eastern edge of the city. Rather than waiting for police to arrive, investigators say Serdez drove home and Brandon police arrested him there. Police say he faces a handful of charges, including vehicular homicide, DUI, and hit and run. According to court records, it's his fifth DUI arrest since 2008. The man who died in the crash has been identified as Jonathan Paulsness. He was 29 years old. Also new this midday, police have identified the motorcyclist killed on the viaduct early Saturday morning. Police say 47-year-old Benjamin Vanderweede was going the wrong way when he collided with a car. Investigators say the driver didn't see the motorcycle until it was too late to stop because of a curve in the road. Turning now to weather, it's going to be hot once again today. We're looking at chances for rain as well as we start our week, right, Adam? Yeah, absolutely. We are going to be keeping an eye on that, especially West River to a lesser extent into the east. And part of that has to do with uh, some available energy in the atmosphere. We had plenty of that yesterday and last night for that matter. But we're going to continue to keep an eye on that as we head through the rest of your day. Basically, what you see here, uh, the brighter the shade of yellow and orange, the more energy in the atmosphere for showers and thunderstorms. And you notice we do have that uh, very much more so to the west at first, trying to migrate eastward with a cold front as we go into uh, Friday and Saturday. So we do get those opportunities in place, just uh, not all that frequently. It is going to be something, though, that we have to consider with any outdoor plans, especially if you're, say, toward Pier, which looks great right now. Let me say that is a beautiful view on our camera. 85, a south wind at 13 miles per hour. Uh, compare that to what we have downtown, which is also not sl slacking in that department either. 83 southeasterly wind at 15 miles per hour, and it's also not going to be terribly humid. So we do have that working in our favor as well. Temperatures are in the 70s in a couple of areas like in Spearfish, Worthington and Chamberlain, all with a pair of sevens. 81 in winter, 78 for Valentine, uh, 81 also in Watertown, 82 in Mobridge and Aberdeen, 84 as you head toward Rapid City. Winter aren't all that bad. 10 to 15 miles per hour, mainly out of the southeast if you're East River, uh, kind of out of the northeast as you head toward the hill, so slightly better, not as warm of a breeze, but at least we have something. It's better than the alternative. Satellite and radar largely quiet with very little to go on really for uh, the next couple of hours, but as we head later into the evening, that is expected to change. We do have a marginal risk level one out of five in place for severe weather, basically for the western third of South Dakota, extending as far north and east as Mobridge. We'll go into a little more detail on that a little later on in the show. But for the rest of your afternoon, a healthy mix of southern clouds if you're East River, a highs mainly in the mid to at times upper 80s. So a great day to get outside if you have the chance to do so. It's out west where we have that better opportunity. As some pop up thunderstorms, it could pack an extra punch. And the extra warmth is going to help out with that with highs on that side of 90. We'll talk about the rest of your extended forecast coming up. All right. Thank you, Adam. It's no surprise that the summer heat can do significant damage to a vehicle. But as cities around the country continue to break temperature records and endure long heat waves, some car technicians are finding unusual vehicle issues. Experts say typical summertime issues include dead car batteries, flat tires, deteriorating wiper blades, frequent oil changes, and keeping your engine cool by monitoring the engine overflow tank. There's also an emergence of brake fade in cars, so as the high temps come and Go, be sure to monitor your car for signs of wear. A construction project that started in spring of 2022 is nearing completion at Brandon Valley High School. Crews are currently putting the finishing touches on 22 new classrooms, including chemistry labs, smart rooms, and special education areas that stretch across the 35,000 square foot expansion project. Not only does it increase our, our space, for the number of students we have, but it also provides some innovative and high quality programming opportunities for our kids. Brand Valley starts the school year Wednesday, August 23rd. And tonight's Eye on Kell Land from our Travis Fossing will show you how this expansion project will impact students for generations to come in the Brandon Valley School District. 
Former President Donald Trump lashed out against his latest legal issues while on the campaign trail this weekend. His allies believe another indictment could be coming as soon as this week in the separate January 6th case. Despite his legal problems, he remains the front runner for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. Skyler Henry reports from Washington. Former President Donald Trump pushed back hard against the latest charges against him in the classified documents case. What you're witnessing is a continuation of the single greatest witch hunt of all time. Campaigning in Pennsylvania over the weekend, the Republican frontrunner slammed allegations that he tried to have surveillance video erased after receiving a subpoena. You know, they're not indicting me, they're indicting you. I just happen to be standing in their way. Despite his deepening legal troubles, the former president's supporters are standing by him, giving him a commanding lead over his competition for the Republican presidential nomination. It helps strengthen him politically because people are seeing the establishment for what it is, corrupt. Campaigning in New Hampshire Sunday, Trump's closest rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, tried to make some headway. I think that uh, we need to be focusing on using our energy and resources on defeating Biden and the Democrats. And former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley argued it's time to move on. We can't keep living with indictments and court cases and vengeance of the past. We've got to start going forward. CBS News has learned that a pro-Trump political action committee has spent more than $40 million on legal expenses for Trump and his aides on multiple legal cases this year. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. A property manager at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate made his first court appearance this morning after being charged last week in connection with the classified documents case. Now, according to the indictment, Carlos de Oliveira spoke with the former president the day after investigators subpoenaed security camera video and told a Mar-a-Lago IT employee, quote, the boss wanted the server deleted. 